I am a prophetess. And a prophetess is one who gets divine inspiration through the Word of God and the risen Christ. This is one of the most serious prophecies that I have given out since I started with the Rain of Word. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Coming has to do with the cleansing on the earth, the purification of America and of the world. Here to split the atom of philosophy and religion. Isn't that something? And he is. He definitely is. You know, I was here two weeks ago, and in that two weeks' time, oh boy, if you could walk in my shoes, you would not believe what I walk through every two weeks. I get slammed with this and slammed with that. Bring it on. I say, bring it on. I love a challenge. I love to stand up and I love to quote scripture. I love to just say this is what backs me up. I love to say Jesus is Lord because, you know, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. He is powerful. You know, it is a spiritual, it's a spiritual thing. It's not a thing that has to do with our flesh where we get all emotional. You know, um, I want to give you a little testimony here. <clears throat> I feel like I'm put through a test every now and then by the man upstairs. And, uh, you know, I fail so often. I get into this, oh, i got to cry over that. Or I feel so sad. I feel down. I have to call somebody up and tell them how bad I feel. You know what? When I get all done, 
I feel worse than I did when I started because I'm not handling it right. See, the proper thing to do that we are supposed to do, we are to stand in faith and believe that if we trust in him, trust and obey, there's no other way. If we trust in him, we don't even have to worry about anything. He will step in if we just walk in faith. And you know, it's not easy to walk in faith. I learned this week about a man called Jehoshaphat in the Bible. What a mouthful. Good grief. I would never name my kid Jehoshaphat. What a terrible, I mean, I suppose his mother thought he was a nice little baby and everything was great. But imagine a kid going to school learning to spell Jehoshaphat. I used to say, jumping Jehoshaphat, you know, as an expression. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I learned about Jehoshaphat, and I'd kind of like to lead into this whole thing with this because um, it really, really does tell how we are supposed to walk. And uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. This is in the book of Second Chronicles, you know. <clears throat> and he was, I believe, a king. And this is chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. They come to fight with him, okay? You ever have that happen? Your family, whatever? And then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There comes a great mul multitude against you from beyond the sea on the side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazonamar, which is en, 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 en Getty or something. I don't understand all these things, but if you just overlook the strange words, okay? And Jehoshaphat was afraid. He was so afraid. You ever get afraid? Things come at you. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now, if this country would get on their knees and humble themselves and pray and turn from the wicked ways, God said, I would heal your land. But no, we don't want to do it that way. So consequently, we're getting slammed with bad weather. We're under the test of all kinds of things coming at us in the United States, which I'm going to talk more about here in the prophetic word, okay? So Jehoshaphat got in this fear, and they all got before the Lord and asked him to help them. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem, the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? Aren't you a God in heaven? He wants to know how strong God is. And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to come against thee. He's saying, God, you are great. You are holy. You are able to do anything. That's faith. I'll tell you right there. But still he had that fear. And I've gone through some tests lately where all of a sudden I get in my flesh and I think, oh, my God, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? Calling people up, asking people for help, running to the pastor, you know. And guess what? Now he's sit, talking to God. Aren't you the God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? See, he's telling God what a great God he is. So... They dwelt therein, have built thee a sanctuary for thy name. And he's saying all this. If when evil comes upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, if all these things come upon you, listen to this, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence for thy name is in this house I, and cry unto thee in our affliction, 
then thou wilt hear and help. He says, if I cry loud enough to you, God, you will hear me and you will help me. It does work sometimes for me. Anyway, now we have, and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. They're trying to take away the possession. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Now this is the secret. You don't know what to do, and you've got to keep your eyes, tunnel vision, straight on him. You cannot get off on the side, start whining and howling and crying and, and begging and pleading. You have to stand by and just say, I'm going to trust God and it's going to work. See that? Now, and all Judah stood before their Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. They're all standing before God, okay? Then upon Jehaz, Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benahilah, Benilah, the son of Jeel, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. All of a sudden, the Spirit came down. I've had this happen to me when I've been in prayer. All of a sudden, I feel surrounded by the Holy Spirit, and you just feel a peace in your heart, you know? Listen to this. Now, they stood before the Lord with their little ones, and he said, Hearken, ye all Judah, this is the Spirit, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. God's talking to them. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of the great multitude, so, for the battle is not yours, but it is mine. It is God's battle. When we have battles, they're not our battles. They've already been taken care of on the cross, and if we can just sit back and trust him, he will step in, and he will remove all these things. And believe me, I have got some big battles that need to be removed. But I know I will be back here in two to four weeks. And I know I will be able to give you a testimony of what happened. Now, he spoke to them like he speaks to me and others. Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. And you shall find them at the end of the brook before the... He's telling them where they can find their enemy. Isn't that something? You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Can you imagine not being afraid of anything? Put on the armor of God and go out there and say... I am going to stand against my enemies. I am not going to fall down. So guess what? They did that. Yes. Yeah. Go ye down against them. You're not going to need to fight in this battle. So Jehoshaphat, he bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. See, they were humble. They believed him. They fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So when you get a problem, go in your bedroom or your bathroom or whatever and start praising him. Start saying, thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. I know you're going to take care of this problem. I am your child. You are my dad. And I'm sitting on your knee. And I know you're going to protect me. That's what we have to do. Okay? So they rose up early in the morning. You know? And they stood up to praise the Lord God Israel with a loud voice. And they rose up early in the morning, went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe the prophets, so shall ye prosper. If you believe the prophets in his word, 
or prof prophetic people like me, you will prosper and be in health. And this is a promise right in his word. If you want to prosper, you want to be prospering financially, spiritually, uh, physically, believe in what God is saying to you right now. So they rose up early. Hear me, O Judah. You're going to prosper. Okay, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. All the people start singing songs and forgetting all that they had these big armies coming after them. You know, the beauty of holiness. They went out before the army and said, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Could you say that? Somebody is coming after you with a machete or something. Could you stand there and say, praise the Lord? I don't know. The Lord set am ambushments against the children of Ammon. The Lord sent these ambushments against them. Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Smitten means they were hit. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. They all turned against each other. Confusion came over them, and God had them all turn against each other. So they ended up fighting against themselves and coming down. And that took care of them. And so the, the moral of this whole story is when you get hit, I don't care if it's a tornado, I don't care if it's an earthquake. I don't care if it's your mother-in-law telling you where to go or, or your wife or your husband or your kids are raising holy heck. I don't care what it is. If you stand and praise him and thank him and believe and trust him, you can step back and you can watch him work. And I've done this many times. And believe me, you can trust. It may take a while, you know, like I said. I've got some people living in my home. They don't belong there. They're squatters. But you know what? The end justifies the means. I know that they will come down. I know that anyone that steps on the feet of God's people will come down. I've seen it happen time and time again. Now, we don't want that. We want these people to fall in love with Jesus, of course. But anyway, that is my main gist today. I wanted to get that out to you. And I'm going to give you some more updated things from the past. And i got to get in this real quickly because I have so much that I couldn't get finished before. And I'm going to start with message one right here. Now, these are inspired through the Holy Spirit when I'm praying. These are words that come through just like a typewriter, right on my spirit. If I was writing a letter, you know, Dear John, and the words come in as you write a letter, same thing. He speaks through the spirit of your heart right here, you know, and it is a wonderful thing when you can start to hear God speak. And you know something? I don't know this word. I didn't study that word. I didn't know what was in there. And I started getting stuff that was in there years ago. I've been doing this now on the TV station. It'll be 19 years in August of this year. And I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not a Johnny come lately. I'm not a priest. I'm not a rabbi. I'm just a housewife and a, a woman that fears and loves the Lord. And God chose me, that little girl from North Walpole, New Hampshire, walking around the streets, starving to death as a child. He put his hand on my shoulder and he said, you are going to speak for me someday. And here I am. So let's see. This goes back to January 16th, 2017, over a year ago. The inauguration. That was back when Trump was getting inaugurated. He said, what you see is disdain with the, with the uh, other side. Disdain is hatred covered over with a cloak of animosity. It's a hard pill to swallow. Severe active change. They can't handle it that Trump is coming in. It is a tsunami of extreme coming toward a cumulative corrupt system. Now, do you think I could make all this up? I don't even know 
hardly what cumulative means, except I assume it's something that piles up. Your democratic system is cracking wide open. Now, this is a year ago. Look what's happened. Exposure of a high degree is rolling into the political arena. The majority has spoken. You are witnessing a real, aggressive, bold revolution. That came within the last year. There is no way to stop this movement. Fanfare such as you've never seen. You saw it on the streets come after this. This is all on a tape, a DVD, back in January 16th. 2017 in that area area era excuse me there is no way to stop this movement now the democrats are sullen and pulling back away from the inauguration but this will weaken their party not strengthen it they are power hungry but as of january 20th they will be power broke this is january 16th listen to that they will be power broke. The massive tsunami of change is ready to break down all hypocrisy, secrecy in the government. Imagine that. Secrecy, thievery, political betrayal, rhetoric, underhandedness, untruthfulness, tactics in existence today. He said a massing, massive honing in on the tyrants that he called gluttonous, overfed politicians, fat and rich, but the country is hemorrhaging from lack of fiscal strength. Now, I don't even know what fiscal means, but anyway. Greed in the bur bureaucracy has bled her dry. Trump will stand tall and no one will dethrone him or his power to bring America to a new level of truth, honor, justice, and spiritual awakening. Imagine that. Be ready for massive change, eruption, disruptions as your land receives her cleansing of high degree. She will be scrubbed and restrained, retrained, and maintained until she bends her knees to me and my son. Isn't that amazing? Oh, my word. And that all has happened, happened the last year. 10 17 This is still 2017. Is talking to his people. Be still. It is not as you see all the things that happen to you. Stillness is amazing in a child. I have not forsaken my people. You are better off than you were. I see a valley of peace coming for my people. You will remain in peace where you are. You are strong in me, so stop wavering. There's a lot of wavering in the body today. Stop wavering, he said. And I've been guilty of that. It will all work out quickly as I recruit all that has been taken from my people, never to leave again, he says. Now, ye have been faithful to me, many of you. What else could I ask for? I have sent angels to guide you gently and to preserve your wares and rest today and watch me work. He's saying for all his people out there, rest today and watch me work. I have covered, he said, you over. Now move on to victory. See, it's a, it's a walk of victory, I tell you. We just learned the, the path. Way to go. 11, 7, 17. In everything there is a season. It comes and goes on the earth. Death brings closure on the earth. But in my kingdom, it brings new life. Listen to that. Do you grieve over the fall when the trees shed their coat? Nay, spring brings new life. So it is with with uh, many things happening on the earth, he said. Many killing each other, but they will set in shoal. Their end is near, but the innocents are here with the Savior forever. One day I will empty the earth of all humans. There is a cleansing coming, he says, starting this year. America needs to be bathed in my Holy Spirit. She is diligent in politics, religions, but slack in repentance and love. She turns, let's see, away. Yeah, she turns away from my son, but one day she will come face to face with him. She will bow down and regret the backward stance she is on. Look not to the grave of humanity, but look to my son. He reigns none other. And that's a song I was singing this morning. Now we have another one here. Now, 13017 
My word is sufficient in all sufficient in all things. Even you, I see you there. He says, tattered and worn, my people. Do not fear, my children. Joy will come to you. He says, a new day. Great revelations coming from my kingdom to my sheep very soon. Isn't that nice? He says, to you, my precious souls on the earth, I see you being badgered daily. Do not take it to heart, for my hand of correction will hit all they who lord it over my saints. There is good news on your path. I see open doors coming to my people. Take it. You will remain here. You are all on the cutting edge of eternity. Everybody in this world. A massive move over the whole earth. I see, he says, m multiple crowds as in the days of... Listen to this. <clears throat> this happened since then. I see multiple crowds as in the days of the Romans, defying government and society as a whole. What did we have last summer and fall and everything? Massive crowds in the street walking around, defying the government, defying, oh, you know, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. you got to change government. you got to do this for us and everything else. It is so sickening. It is so sickening. Now, massive crowds, just like back in the days of the Romans. He said, society, they will defy as a whole. Bedlam, these are the seeds of the age of ruthlessness. No morals, no rules, no love for one another. But the righteous will rise up and defend my cause. So you can expect this. The winds will blow and the snow will be knee deep. I will overcome all who defy and go against Trump. He will stand and not fall down. I see a new face coming on the scene. I don't know what that was, but there you go with that. Now, 2-5-17, this is February. Just about one year ago, what is happening? Trump, immigration, federal judges do not concern over my work. My child, only I can see all truth. It is not as you see. I see a spiritually derelict nation, America. She is failing from within. He said, being overrun by foreigners seeking, listen to this, the spoils of your land, coming here to eat off the table of America. No man shall question my man of the hour, Trump, and move in peace. If you want to question him, you will not move in peace. I have a plan to determine my will. So there's that one. I'm going to get through as many of these as I can. <clears throat> Here we have 2017 again. Trump will get his chosen approved and the fury will calm in due time. He said the changes made will ripple down to the people real soon. Listen to this. This is last a year ago. A radical change in the financial system. A bonus to the working people coming. We didn't even know about this just a little while ago. An extreme cut in taxes. The majority of those stirring up tension on your streets are not even citizens, but illegal aliens. They will be sifted also and dealt with harshly, if not here legally, and creating dire havoc for your land. Trump's going to deal with all this. It's going to be, they're going to be held accountable. They would be better off to lie low and be less conspicuous. I see a new Supreme Court judge, I believe that happened already, who is conservative place in office. I see my people coming together as one body in prayer. Many miracles will be coming. I will come alive in them and rise up in power and strength, a new era of resurrection power flowing upon the earth, joy beyond measure as victory stands in her place in America. We will be victorious. I'll tell you that right now. My son shall be victorious in my bride. Now, listen to this. The political party system is broken. Iran and Iraq are going to come together, meld together as one country. The days of attacking the Muslim countries is in limbo. At this time, I see Trump ruling with an iron fist. He fears no one but his maker. Isn't that something? He has a well-planned agenda. It will amaze and shock the people all over the world. There is reformation coming, reforming, reformation, such as you have never seen. 
Listen to that. The iron fist of the democratic, democratic, he says, rulers, which are pirates, hate mongers, are out to sink your president. But they will meet my fist of iron, my soldiers of my kingdom, my anger. So it will be worse than, he said, a brick wall coming against Trump. I see the weather getting brutal, extremes in the great plains, strong winds, severe, he said, ice and snowstorms are slated to hit America. We've been getting all that. Wrecks all over the roads. You've seen that? This is a year ago. Now, I see many weary from it all. Spring will see many states forced to stand on their own. No more free benefits coming from the government. That is it. Now, hmm, that is that, and that is something else. So if you see these people living off the land and they're aliens or whatever, it's all going to stop. We're going to come out of the hole. Right now we are deep in the hole, but we are going to be brought up out of that hole. Now we have here, this is 2517 again. I see a staff over your land. It is called retribution. Self-indulgent generation you have right now. I see America broken soon to be cleansed and purified. She is being drained by other countries. These are the countries that drain America. Mexico, Cuba, Iran, he said, and the quota is high in the Muslim world. Soon the money system will stagger. As a drunken sailor, what did we have? Oh, we're going to shut down the government. We can't hold up the government anymore. There's no money. Trillions in the hole. That's a drunken sailor he's talking about. This is one year ago on the 5th of this month. Listen to that. It'll stagger the money system, the stock market, too. He says, as a drunken sailor, America has the whole world on her back. Trump inherited a den of evil conspirators who want to do him and America in. I send him in to hold the arms of Miss Liberty up, to set back her financial debt clock. But the piranhas of government are out, he says, waggling the tongues to drown him in his pursuits for me. But I, the great Jehovah, have my angels, he says, guarding his feet so that he won't fall. Listen to this. Immigration, the courts will battle it out. A firm hand will settle this, these cases and for all. The anvil will hit the bench. Trump will prevail in the White House. He will move openly despite what the vile laders of respect will do or say. Many will rise up for the call. Listen to this. All of a sudden there's going to be an awakening that's going to come over the land. God's people are going to rise up and speak forth the truth. Stand together. Come together. And I tell you right now, if you're out there and you're just sitting there doing nothing, get up, rise up, and do what you need to do. Right now, if I, a housewife, can do it, you can do it too. Move openly, despite what the violators of respect will do or say. Many will rise up for the call. The media is after Trump. They try to create a vacuum in the Oval Office. They are full of hatred toward the Republicans. The offenders on your streets in your country are basically, he says again, aliens, he said. They're basically aliens, he said, causing fires and chaos in your land. There should be a check on all to see the statutes of their citizenship, status, I'm sorry. America has he said, spill more blood on the earth due to her need for the control of the oil and Arab lands and her heavy desire for drugs. Your cities are over-infected with murder, drugs, and the like. I say all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone out there, none of us are innocent. Let every man examine his own heart. It is desperately wicked without Jesus. Your heart is desperately wicked. Some compare, compare excuse me, America with Russia. Ye are all no good in my sight. Russians, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. If you examine your heart and you don't have the Lord in your heart, you're all on, we are all on the same level, including me. You know, one in, now, you must become one with me in the spirit 
of my son Jesus. So simple. The world scoffs at America. They will become bolder. Trump will handle all openly and guardedly. Do not fear. The cleansing of your land is here. Evil will wax worse and worse. But grace abounds where evil is. Evil abounds. Soon the chains will fall off Trump. He will be proven to be above reproach. He is a genius with leadership capabilities. Isn't that something? And I received that a year ago. And that's all taking place. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all done today either. Here we have 2.21.17. There is an ongoing war in America. She is full of contentious, contentiousness. The winds are blowing in the south. The north is unstable. Unruly weather everywhere. America's war is within. It's not outside. It is within. She is center stage in evil. It is rolling in on her streets. These are the veins of a country. They are clean, clear or clean. Are they clean, he said. Her heart is her spiritual compass. America's heart. What is America's spiritual compass, he said. Interesting. Is she for the God who created her land, or is she for the God of the Far East? All them gods. She follows after the latter. So this, this is at this point. Her need to control the whole earth. She even has attempted to control outer space with her space program. Listen to that. She is domineering, but her time is up, he said. Freedom no more to be dominant. I have set a new man in office to do my bidding. He will trump them all. He is a man of power, my power of the hour. The rebellious child, he said, America shall be placed on hold. Listen to that. Her tantrums shall be dealt with. I see, he said. Let's see. Oh, seven things falling on her backside. One is she shall receive violent weather. This year, we did that. That's 2017. Catamount. Yeah, catamount to shocks. She has never seen. Two, her economic stock market system, she'll flounder. Now, what happened this past week? This is a year ago. The stock market started doing its thing, up and down, quivering, shaking, rocking and rolling, you know, around. And guess what? This was all predicted back a year ago. I see your sanctuaries full of danger. You can't even be safe in a church anymore. He says, Christians under arrest, pressure is never seen. I see all religions, he says, melding into one religious lump. My people, he says, pulling away to become one with my son. I see new diseases erupting, and he said, newer cures, but an overload of people moving on to eternity. We have a flu now. It's not just a flu. It is multiple flus, and you don't know which one's going to hit you when, where, how. But they say, go take the shot, even though the shot doesn't work half the time. Go take the shot. Well, one of my brothers took the shot, got wicked sick, you know. And it's going to be like this until America gets on her knees and prays. Now we have newer diseases erupting. But an overload of people moving on to eternity. Sixty-some-odd children just died of the flu in this country. That's awful, babies and children. I see, he said, the young people rebelling everywhere against society as a whole. I see new earthquakes, sinkholes in divers places. I see man cursing the heavens and my son openly. Yeah, they're cursing God, cursing Jesus. Do they really think these little peons walking the earth, that if they curse God, that they're gonna get him all upset? I'm sure with his hand of power, you know, he's going to get upset. Let's see. Now, I see my hand losing correction in all form, severe power outages, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, wiping out complete towns. That has happened. This is the year of the cleanse, purification. I will scrub you until you shed tears, repent of your wicked, evil ways. Trump will stand. They who seek to remove him will fall in the ditch. 
He will bring truth and honor to your land. Russia did not put him in office. I did. The votes and his machines could not alter his path. He will tower above the plans of the wicked, he said, who twist every word that comes out of his mouth. He has stirring up the swamp. He says he stirred up the swamp, which is a political scene. It is only the beginning of his heroic walk for me. He will usher in change that will rebuild a whole new country for me. I see revenue, new bridges, new walls, new military, new money system. This is a year ago. New blessings, he says, of my on my people. He says, rolling in. New blessings coming to his people. Where evil abounds, he says, again, grace does much more abound. Underground church flourishing, miracle scene, only by the spiritual eye of my church. Overcoming power to they who will triumph in me. This is fabulous. My word shall, he said, shall flower like a river of steel over the whole earth. He says, there is power in the blood of the lamb. My voice will ring, he said, over America again. She is mine. Who can take her, he said. The pilgrims claimed her for me, he said, and their prayers are still in action. Trump will remove all who are in her bosom, who have stolen her peace and her virtue. America, America, God shed her grace on thee. From sea to shining sea, she is flailing now, but her strength shall return. I promise you, her young shall turn to me, my son. The prayers of my saints have ordained it. Isn't that fabulous? A revelation that shall override the revolution on the streets of your land. He said, this is the final phase before my return. It will sweep all over the earth, this final phase. I will be there. I will not turn my back on my people, my new converts, the broken, the bruised. He said he's not going to turn his back on the broken or the bruised, the heart sick or the handicapped, and the children. I will sweep them all into my kingdom. So if you worry about that, don't worry about it. He's going to take care of all of them. One day soon, gather my hope this day and rest in knowing my angels, my spirit, and the voice of my son is moving this hour. I say to you, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Be still and know I am the one and only true God. Love overcomes all. I love you, sinner or saint. He doesn't care. He still loves you. I plead with you to enter into my heart place before the door to heaven closes forever. Come, my people, come. He said, the sweet essence, he says, of heavenly perfume will draw you through into my kingdom. Follow me, and I will uphold you forever in my hand of love. Peace, joy, and security. My bride is forming even now. Come, my dearest people. He said, the best is yet to come. Please come. Boy. I'll tell you, if that isn't something else. Oh, wow. You know, every time I read this, that's something for me, too. Oh, what a word. I can't even believe that I've received all of this. It's a miracle. God is speaking today, loud and clear. He tells you he loves you. Come to him. You know, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. Oh, God. I hope that something from this sunk into your breast today. I just hope and pray that you will follow Jesus. Oh, God. There's more to it than going to church, sitting in a pew. You know, you can, you can get to know him right in your bedroom. You can, but you need fellowship too, be with other people like you. Let's raise up Christians, let's rise up, let's be strong. Let's come against evil. Let's do it for the sake of our country, for our own sake, and for the sake of the Lord. I just want to tell you, thank you so much. 
for watching the Rainbow Word. God bless you.